Well, Team USA a week ago fired Vlatko, their head coach, after the failures in the Olympics and then obviously what happened at the end of the of the World Cup when they got knocked out in the knockout round. The players, for the most part, have been silent up until now. And now Lindsay Horan is the first one that has really publicly spoken out. And she said this team was ill-prepared to play in the World Cup. There were huge questions about scouting reports, individual game preparations, the fact that Vlatko was experimenting, moving players around in different positions and practice days before a game. There was no continuity to build this whole thing. So she is really upset about that situation, kind of insinuating Vlatko had to go. Regardless of how well we played, we didn't play really well. Now, my response has been I, I watched those games at 3 a.m. really closely. And we, we had a team that was in transition. Mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. Lindsey Horan, I thought, had just a great tournament. I agree. Uh, you know, Megan Rapino did not. Uh, obviously, Alex Morgan had opportunities to score but didn't. But we had so many young kids. The young kids all had chances to put the ball in the back of the net and had shots that hit crossbars, hit post, were blocked in front. There were a bunch of scoring opportunities. Team USA just did not score. They had they had one goal in their final three games. They only had four goals in the whole four games before they got got knocked out. But uh, so Lindsay Horan was was really vocal and critical. Now this story is just broken within the hour. The head coach of the World Cup champion Spanish team yes has been removed. Really, he's been fired. He's the one. I, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Spanish coach at the end of the game, standing oh, on the sideline, grabbed his crotch as he looked towards the English side and grabbed his crotch. <laughs> then he ran on the field to celebrate, grabbed one of his players, and kissed her on the lips. Jeez. And then he ran around doing big group hugs with all the other female players. Megan Rapino just ripped him at being yeah. a sexist and all that. It was just a terrible display. So 24 hours after the story really kind of got out in public, he is gone. Christian Pulisic. Hey. AC Milan. League play. Serie A just starts. Two mm -hmm. goals, one assist. Hey, right on. First two games. Cool. He's done very, very well. So that's kind of cool. Okay, your response to Team USA, the Spanish coach, and Pulisic in Italy. Well, first of all, the Spanish coach, I mean, that's like assault. I mean, to grab a woman and kiss her on the lips on it, you know, without permission. Uh, but let's, I want to talk about Lindsay Horan because boy, was she tough in that tournament? I mean, she's big, she's strong. She was knocking people around, but she is one in a long list of people that have criticized Vlatko. I mean, remember Carly Lloyd was vo vocal. A lot of others were uh, really upset with this guy. I mean, Vlatko had this great opportunity, all this talent, all this pedigree. And it just seems like he was not taking it as seriously as he should, you know, changing up the lineup or the rotation, like a couple of days before uh, the games doesn't make any sense. It moved players because of injuries yeah. to different positions right before they play a game. I mean, it, Julie Ertz was moved to midfield. She's not a midfielder. And they asked her to be the catalyst to make plays. They gave her like one day's notice to do this. It's like sounds desperate. Yeah, it just it was strange, and uh, and I grant you, they lost Betty uh, Sauerbrunn. I mean, I mean, she was their best fullback, best defender, and she went down with a knee injury. They had, I think, they had three significant injuries. But I, I guess I don't understand Vlatko's approach to training when the players are saying we weren't intense enough. If he was going to make changes, we needed to practice what they were doing. Um, yeah, and you watched. I watched the a chunk of the Spain England game, the championship game, mm -hmm. and I've never seen pinpoint passing as I saw Spain. Holy cow! As they were coming up the field, boom, 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 boom. They had like a hundred. I'm going to say 140 pass completions. England had less than 90. Wow! So I mean, Spain was able to get it out of the zone, to move it at a much fa faster tempo, and to be so accurate. Their ball control was just phenomenal. It was like 68% they controlled the ball during that game against England. They beat them only one nothing. But, so, you know, you got to prepare to play the way you're going to play in the tournament games. And as Lindsay said, they didn't, they didn't do that. 
you know, interesting talking about Spain because that's part of the artistry of the game, yes. you know, part of the beauty of the game, the way they can pass and be so precise. And you can really see like, you know, when you team USA, like in the 1990s played Brazil, I remember in the 94 world cup and it was like night and day, you know, in terms of how the, the skilled players are able to control that ball, it like sticks to them like Velcro, the way they move that ball around. Um, so good on Spain for for doing that. I mean, because a lot of people have criticized the women. Oh, they don't have the skills. They're nowhere near. They can't beat a teenage <laughs> club team of men. Spain's not in that conversation. No, no. I mean, so these <laughs> a lot of these women are legit. Uh, but boy, what a wasted opportunity for Team America. Yeah, I thought they were in a team in transition. I think we've seen the future. The future is much brighter. I mean, they've, they've really got a wave of really good, young, skilled people as they say goodbye uh, to Rapino and Alex Morgan and whomever. I mean, the program is here, but the program used to be here. Yeah. It used to be the global power, and it's not the power right now. Is that a one-time thing? We'll find out four years from now. Speaking of